Five Nights at Freddy's is a series focused on the Fazbear branded animatronics that are possessed by the spirits of the missing child incident. Poor victims that will attack any security guard that moves in the hope of finding William Afton, their killer. But is that still the focus of the story? It's been 10 years since FNAF 1 came out, and looking at the most recent non-VR mainline game, we've got Security Breach, the newest iteration of Fazbear with brand new animatronics. But the game is three years old, and since then we've gotten plenty more iterations in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. The year it came out, I made a theory about which animatronics might be possessed, but since then my opinions have heavily swayed, and in no small part to things like Ruin and Help Wanted 2. So now, in 2024, are any of the animatronics in Security Breach actually possessed? Well, Slices, put on your aprons and let's bake ourselves a theory. I think the most logical way to go about this question would be to treat Security Breach like any game we did in the past. The way you find out if something is possessed is if there's a probable victim that could possess it, and if that thing is acting irregular or dangerous. So do we have those two things for the Security Breach cast? Well, we definitely have knowable victims. At the end of the bad ending, Gregory cuddles up underneath a newspaper that shows us at least nine people have gone missing, so it's definitely not for a lack of victims. And the animatronics are definitely getting quirky at night. I mean, Chica's eating garbage, Monty's destroying everything, Roxy's showering herself in compliments, oh, and they kill you if you get too close. This seems like it should be an open and shut case. Sure, the animatronics are possessed. Is there any other explanation for their odd behavior? Any non-supernatural explanations? Well, there is. In fact, a very direct one, one so compelling that it kind of goes against this at all. And that is the Mimic One program, or at least its current iteration, Glitch Trap. But to fully understand why, we need to touch on one of the main themes from Tales of the Pizzaplex, the short story collection that came out alongside Security Breach. Now, don't worry, I'm not here to do a full book summary, and I don't need to. For this theory, we really only need the main context that the story provides. In one of the stories, the storyteller, Fazbear tries to implement an AI to generate stories for their animatronics to act out so they can fire most of the creative department. It's a story much too true to life. But luckily, even more true to life, trying to implement generative AI into anything makes everything go wrong and be worse. But unlike real life, where all generative AI can do is steal art and ruin the planet, in the story, the AI makes the animatronics start acting very strangely. All of the animatronics connected to the storyteller start having more and more exaggerated personalities. Chica was programmed to be a foodie, Roxy was programmed to be a diva, Monty was programmed to be a meathead, and Freddy was programmed to be the star. But not long after the storyteller was implemented, Chica starts eating trash and becomes a glutton. Roxy is full of herself, narcissistic and mean to others. Monty is violent and destructive, and Freddy becomes so much of a diva, he literally starts trying to steal toys from children. This to me seems like a pretty direct example as to what's going on in Security Breach, especially since the storyteller is housing the Mimic One program. So if Glitch Trap is affecting the animatronics in the games, then a similar result would be happening, and that's exactly what we see in Security Breach. Especially if you consider the beginning of the game when Freddy reboots into safe mode, likely flushing Glitch Trap out of his system. And what is he like after that? Completely normal. Well, for the most part. Freddy himself does act a bit strange, but we'll get there when we get there. So sure, the books seem to explain that their strange behavior is because of the Mimic One program, but why are they trying to kill Gregory so much? We don't really have a very clear reason why in the books, but as far as the games themselves go, I think it's notable that Vanny is also trying to get Gregory and using the animatronics to that end. Already? We know that in Help Wanted, Vanessa's mind gets taken over by the Glitchtrap virus. It's when it first breaks out of where it's contained. And being under Glitchtrap's control, Vanessa forms the Vanny persona, and that's who we're facing off against in Security Breach. So if Vanny is trying to kill Gregory under the control of Glitchtrap, and we're pretty sure Glitchtrap is affecting the main animatronics, then it kind of goes without saying that the reason they want to kill Gregory is because Glitchtrap told them to. So all this to say, are the main four animatronics, Glamrock Freddy, Glamrock Chica, Montgomery Gator, Roxanne Wolf, possessed, or just under the control of Glitchtrap. Well, shell Freddy for now, but the other three I think definitively are not possessed by anything. They're just being controlled by the Glitchtrap virus and spiraling out of control. Now, I do hear you. You made an excuse for Freddy, but what about Roxy? After all, at the end of Ruin, we deactivate her, but five minutes later, she's active again and protecting Cassie going against programming. Is that a sign of possession? I don't actually think so. And the key here is to look at the daycare attendant. 
ruined it. In the ruined daycare, we need to reboot Sun and Moon to fix whatever their issue is, and to get there, we need to stun them with some lights. But once we get close enough, we take our Fraz Wrench, put it into their eye socket, and reboot them. Doing so somehow flushes out the glitch trap virus and lets Eclipse take the reins again. So then it's noteworthy that when the mimic tells us to deactivate Roxy, all we do is the same thing. Put our Faz wrench into her eye socket and reboot her. And then we leave. And it's in that moment when we're gone, Roxy gets rebooted and the glitch trap virus is flushed out. That's why the mimic thinks Roxy's deactivated. She gets turned off and when she's turned back on, Glitchtrap isn't inside of Roxy anymore. They can't monitor her now. To the Mimic's network of connections, Roxy's still deactivated. So no, I still think Roxy, Chica, and Monty are all just robots following programming. Well then, what about the others? Man, it feels weird to not hold something. Mark left and I don't have Frebby anywhere. I guess I just have to make a plushie. Breaking news. Locals have reported a new cryptid in the woods, supposedly summoned by a ne'er-do-well. Footages have been obtained from several witnesses reporting a small piece of toast terrorizing them in the local forest. If you would like to get one of your own, they're available now on makeship.com slash product slash toast dash plushie. The link is in the description for further information. This plushie will be available for the next three weeks via pre-order. Witnesses also allege that there are two faces of the plushie, one that looks happy and one that looks dizzy. Do not trust this toast under any circumstances. Well, DJ Music Man is pretty handily not possessed. A lot of the glam rock logic carries over to DJ Music Man, but there's literally a duffel bag message that mentions that DJ Music Man has a bouncer mode that'll break warranty if we use it. So it's perfectly possible that Glitchtrap isn't controlling DJ Music Man, he's just built to do that. The Mini Music Man are pretty similar to the glam rocks, where it seems likely that they're just robots doing a task that they've been told to do by either Vanny or Glitchtrap. The glam rock endoskeletons could honestly go either way. There's a possibility that they're also being controlled by Glitchtrap, but there's another possibility that they're just not finished being programmed yet. We learned through Help Wanted 2 and the design of the Endo Maze that these things are not programmed to have directives, but they are taught they learn, likely because they're built off of a similar mimic program. So the reason they're attacking Gregory might be because they're just not learned enough yet. Really at this point, the only question mark is Sun and Moon themselves. And I hate to do this twice, but we are going to put a pin in Sun and Moon for now because they are much better served to be talked about later. I hear you. So far, all of the animatronics are just being controlled by Glitchtrap. So if they're not possessed, what about Glitchtrap? Is Glitchtrap possessed by something? For the longest time, I had believed that Glitchtrap is a digital manifestation built off of the Mimic One program infected by William Afton's agony. Quick aside, in FNAF, agony refers to the energy of the most negative human emotion, agony. The books speculate that if something incredibly tragic happens, the emotions felt by the victims in that moment can infect nearby objects, essentially possessing them. For Glitchtrap, that explanation does make sense. We already have an AI program in Mimic 1. Another quick aside, 
I totally forgot to explain what the Mimic One program does. Long story short, the basis of this program is to see something and replicate it. It just monkey see, monkey do, and it can take in a lot of things and then replicate them in different combinations. That's all it's programmed to do. Put into a game built off of William's worst deeds, right? It, it, it's one of those memes where we trained an AI to only do William Afton crimes. So mix that with William Afton's actual agony and this malicious manifestation that can take over people's minds and is trying to continue where William left off, it makes sense. Not to mention, it seems to be forcing Vanny to make a new body for itself built out of William Afton's remains. But then August happened, and we got an interview with Scott Cawthon himself by Dawko. And when talking about Security Breach and some of the miscommunications around its story, we got this quote. And I had, I had a specific story for this in mind, okay, for Security Breach, I really did. I had a very specific story in mind, and it is very different than the one that got in the game. And I think a part of that is the way that I conveyed that to steal wool. And I can give you a really easy example for this. And, and I'm, I'm hesitant to say this because I don't like messing with the lore, but I think in this case, it's okay. When it comes to Burn Trap, originally, Burn Trap was never supposed to move. He was supposed to just be something you saw in the corners, or like if you're walking past the machinery, you might be able to peek in between two things and see him in the corner or propped up against a wall, almost like almost like a, a some kind of decaying movie prop. And you never fully understood what his purpose was. And he had a very specific purpose. And I'm not going to say what that purpose was, but realistically, he never moved. It's interesting that Burn Trap was never meant to move, and he was just intended to be in the corner of your vision, sometimes appearing behind something, but when you do a double take, he's gone. Almost like a hallucination. And it's also interesting that after Security Breach, the only time we've seen Burn Trap ever show up again is in a drawing by Gregory, saying that Gregory saw him, but we still don't know if it's real. Almost like it was a hallucination. But if he was, why would Gregory be hallucinating? The books give us some key information as to what Gregory was doing before Security Breach. Namely, he was working under Glitchtrap, much like Vanessa was as Vanny. And it seems like he was going by the name GGY or Dr. Rabbit, it's not super clear. The important thing though is that Gregory was working for Glitchtrap, and if so, he would have likely used a Vanny mask like Vanessa and Cassie in Ruin. And we know from Ruin that when you put on that Vanny mask, you receive a chip in your occipital nerve so that Helpy can still appear in your vision when you're not wearing the mask. In Ruin, Helpy seems to be a manifestation of Glitchtrap. So essentially, doing this allows Glitchtrap to appear in your vision even when using no technology that is infected with the Glitchtrap virus. But for Ruin, Helpy is cute and friendly. It might be Glitchtrap, but it's still trying to lure Cassie in. Meanwhile, Gregory has recently betrayed Glitchtrap and is acting defiant, trying to foil his plans. I think it's highly likely that the Burn Trap hallucination is how Glitchtrap appears to the deserter, Gregory. And if that's true, then Burn Trap needn't not be physical. Which then begs the question, if Burn Trap didn't exist and William's body is burnt and gone, where does the agony come from to create Glitch Trap? Well, there is a breakaway point in this theory. If you believe that the Fazbear Fright's epilogues are true, and you still think that agony formed Glitch Trap, you do have a way out here. Very briefly, in the Fazbear Fright's epilogues, William Afton's should-be-dead charred body is in a hospital, it gets retrieved, and then it's wheeled to a Fazbear warehouse. And once there, he pretty much explodes onto every nearby object, infecting those objects with agony. Now granted, in the epilogues, seemingly all of those objects are collected and then destroyed, but this does technically give you plausible deniability. It's possible that since Fazbear brought the technology to scan in that created Glitchtrap, one of those objects infused with Afton's agony ended up in Fazbear's hands, and they gave it to the Help Wanted devs. Totally possible. I myself am still really on the fence about the Fazbear Frights series being inside of the timeline of the games. So if you don't believe that, then all of William Afton is still within the FNAF 6 pizzeria if it's even usable. And that pizzeria is buried under the Security Breach Pizzaplex, which is only accessed by Vanessa when she's Vanny, which means Glitchtrap already exists. So if that is true, what if William Afton's agony isn't a part of Glitchtrap? What if William Afton is finally truly gone and Glitchtrap is something else entirely? What if you hit the subscribe button because it's free to do and it really helps my channel, thank you very much. The Mimic One program we see and Help Wanted came from somewhere, and it was scanned in from technology provided by Fazbear. The secret of the Mimic trailer gives us the date 1979, and the Mimic 
Sonic 1 program chooses to represent itself with a felt sewn together suit. It seems to me like this Mimic 1 program is much older and has learned a lot more than we gave it credit for before Help Wanted. So much older that I think it and Sun and Moon come from the Fall Fest days. This event that we don't know really anything about but keeps getting referenced over and over in Freddy's games. I think the Mimic may have learned about William Afton a long time ago, but eventually it ends up in Help Wanted. And that Mimic 1 program, already knowledgeable of William Afton and Fazbear, is trained off of all of the worst crimes that Afton ever did. The missing child incident, the possessed animatronics, the pursuit of Remnant, it's all there and it keeps learning it more and more and more and eventually that mimic one program starts to form a persona and build a character it begins to believe that it's something else william afton is back but not literally the mimic one program tricks itself into thinking it is William Afton. It thinks it's William Afton's ghost trapped in this game and is doing anything it can to exit the digital medium and continue where William Afton left off. This is evil gaining sentience, an AI believing it's real. But if Glitchtrap is just an AI programming gaining a consciousness, what could defeat that? Well, a reflection. We shelved Glamrock Freddy earlier, and for good reason. I mentioned that it does some things that lead people to believe, of all the Glamrocks, Freddy is the one that's possessed, many people believing Freddy's possessed by Michael Afton. And that's totally plausible, but I'm suggesting a different theory. There are countless stories in fiction about AI going sentient after being forced to go against its own programming. And what do we hear Glamrock Freddy tell us at the end of Security Breach's Burn Trap ending? I found myself for the first time when I cleared the path. I did not want to, but I had no choice. But now I have a choice. I have changed. I am not me. I don't think in that moment that a spirit flies into Glamrock Freddy and takes over his body. As we mentioned, the Glamrock endoskeletons are likely built with the Mimic programming in mind since they have to be taught, not programmed. And these animatronics use those Glamrock endoskeletons. I think Glamrock Freddy and its AI had been forced too many times by Vanny to go against his core programming. And after enough attempts, it finally breaks and becomes conscious. He finds himself, his true self. He realizes he's not just Glamrock Freddy, he's someone. He has revelations like this throughout the game. We even hear him having some disassociative episode in Parts and Service. This must be where I was born. Look at all the endos. They're all the same. Have I always been a Freddy? Am I Monty with a different shell? What if I am not the first Glamrock Freddy? The line, I am not me, is not a spirit speaking through Freddy, letting us know that Freddy isn't the one in control. It's Glamrock Freddy saying he's not just Freddy anymore. At the beginning of the game, Glamrock Freddy is hard rebooted in safe mode, flushing Glitchtrap's influence out of his system, but its broken AI stays the same. And in helping Gregory and being good and protecting, it learns a true purpose and what it was really meant for. And so, looking back at Security Breach, it's not a story about ghosts possessing animatronics and taking over facilities. I think Security Breach at its core is good and evil gaining consciousness. The horrible deeds of William Afton, giving life to itself to continue its legacy, and a protector's deeds becoming sentient in defiance of it. So is that it? Are there no spirits in Security Breach? Not quite. There's one creature I have not mentioned yet, and that's the Tangle. This blob of black tendrils and wires and animatronic pieces at the basement of the Pizzaplex. If anything in this story is possessed, it's this. But I don't think there's a soul or single consciousness piloting this beast. The tangle to me seems most likely to be a mass of agony and wires, the burnt and melted remains of the FNAF 6 fires meshed and amassed with any tragedy that took place at the Pizzaplex before Security Breach. After all, if Tales in the Pizzaplex is true, 
several construction workers were killed and left in piles down there, and their agony may have mixed with the remains of FNAF 6. After all, FNAF 6 tells us that Remnant, the actual spiritual material that possesses animatronics, can be nullified with enough heat, but we know nothing about what nullifies agony. So even though the spirits had been melted clean, their pain lived on. And now this unknowable, untamable beast is caught in the middle of this battle of artificial intelligence. At least, that's what I think is the most likely summary of Security Breach. But let me know if you fully disagree with me in the comments. This is a spicy one. Don't forget to get a plushie. <laughs> it's on sale now if you didn't pledge. It's on pre-order for three weeks. Get this little mother... Look, it's got two sides. In the meantime, I just finished ranking the best and worst Pokemon of every generation on the second channel, and you can check out that video right here. If you want your fan art featured on the channel, make sure to share with hashtag Toastart. A huge shout out to the best channel members, the Dough Risers, and until next time, as always, stay toasty, Slices.